Big thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. So about two years ago, I built my first autonomous boat, which was a Tupperware. After that, I built a catamaran, which was pretty good until it sank. Next, I built a foam boat designed for shooting hyperlapses. It was quite stable and reliable, but certainly not very hydrodynamically efficient. Next, I built the HSS Banana Slug, which probably wins the award for most hated boat in the whole wide world, even though it worked fine with just a little extra ballast. I was doing some pretty long-range missions with the Banana Slug, so I bought an inflatable kayak to use as a rescue boat if anything went wrong. It was then that I got the idea for my fifth and latest boat, which will be a solar-powered catamaran designed to pull me around the lake in the kayak. I started by designing the holes in CAD. I put a little more effort into the hydrodynamics this time around. It's all sized out to fit two 100 watt solar panels on the top. I got these from sungoldpower.com. Next I designed a mold for the hole and split it up into segments so that the whole thing could be 3D printed. Then I bought a bunch of the cheapest PLA I could possibly find and started printing. Each section of the mold took about 12 hours to print on my CR10 with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Once all the pieces were printed out, I used little wooden pegs to align each section together. I used some Starbond CA to glue them together. I also ended up using Gorilla Glue, which worked really well. To hold all the pieces together, I clamped them down in between two pieces of wood and put a bunch of batteries on top to weigh everything down. Just to kind of smooth out any ridges, I first sanded it with 60 grit sandpaper and then moved up to 120. This mold needed to be durable enough to get two holes out of, and I was afraid that normal spackle was a bit too weak, so I ended up trying this stuff called Elasto Patch, which is a flexible spackle, but I didn't realize at the time that it says it's not sandable. After applying it to both sides of the mold, I started sanding and realized my mistake. But actually, despite the fact that it says it's not sandable, you can sand it, it just doesn't finish very smooth, and it takes a lot of work. To get a smoother surface finish, I ended up putting on normal spackle and sanding that down. I also tried to make some of the sharp edges a little more hydrodynamic by kind of bridging some of the corners with spackle. But it turns out if spackle is too thick, it just cracks when it's drying, so that didn't really work out. Next up, I added a layer of tooling gel coat, which in hindsight was probably not super necessary and ended up being a lot of work. This is really nasty stuff. It smells awful and is probably super toxic. Anyways, it's a two-part mixture, so you mix it up and then I painted it all on the mold. This stuff really needs to be sprayed, but I don't have a spray gun or an air compressor, so I ended up just painting it on with a brush. As you can see, there's quite a few brush strokes, which isn't great. I kind of tried smoothing those out with a heat gun, and it worked a little bit, but not super well. I then put them outside in the sun to cure faster, which ended up being a really dangerous game, as you'll see later. After the gel coat cured, I wanted to do a little test to see how bad the surface finish would be on the molded parts. So for that, I prepped a little section of the mold with some release wax and then a layer of PVA. I then mixed up some 60 minute epoxy and did one layer of six ounce fiberglass. After that cured, I peeled it off and... <laughs> That's awesome. I think this might be the first thing I've ever molded out of fiberglass. So the main point of doing this was to check the surface finish on the inside here. And it's got some little ridges in it, like it's not perfect, but it's also not bad at all. I think the tooling gel coat, um, I could use it as it is, but I think I'll try and sand it flat. That's going to take a lot of sanding though, because I'll have to start with a coarser grit sandpaper and work my way down to a fine grit sandpaper to get a smooth finish. I worked through quite a few grits of sandpaper all the way down to 600 and eventually got a pretty smooth surface finish that I was ultimately pretty happy with. Next up came preparation for the actual molding of a hull. So I started applying mold release wax. I ended up doing, I think, four layers of this stuff. Basically, you put it on, let it dry for a bit, and then buff it out. And you end up with a super glossy surface shine. Then I bolted the two mold halves together with M4 bolts. But then there was a crack in between the two mold halves that I had to do something about. So I ended up putting clay into the crack and smoothing that out. And then I did another layer of mold release wax on top of that. Next came two layers of PVA over the whole thing. If you don't know, PVA is like a release film, so it allows the fiberglass and epoxy to peel out of the mold more easily. Here's mixing up the epoxy. I was using two hour epoxy for this because I knew this, uh, this layup would take a really long time. 
I then finally started laying in the fiberglass and wetting it down with the epoxy. This was a pretty complex mold to do for my first ever fiberglass layup. It wasn't my very first because I've, I've put fiberglass on top of foam plugs before, but this was my first time ever doing like a negative mold. So I had to figure it out pretty quick. I was sure to put extra fiberglass down on all the sharp corners because those were kind of the hardest places to get it to conform to and get it to wet down. This ended up being super tedious and time consuming, but definitely worth it and also a great learning experience. After I put in probably, I don't know, four or five layers of six ounce fiberglass, I trimmed the top off and put some epoxy around the rim and tried to kind of fold the fiberglass down to conform to the, the rim of the mold. So I tucked that into all the corners and laid it out as flat as I could. Next up came a layer of mold release film, which is kind of used to separate the vacuum bag from the fiberglass and then trimmed off the excess. And next up came some vacuum bagging tape that I wrapped around the whole mold and then a layer of vacuum bagging plastic. This stuff is supposed to have a five to one stretch ratio. So my hope was that it would kind of stretch down into the deep cracks of the mold and really push the fiberglass down into the mold. This was definitely the hardest part, just trying to lay this vacuum bag out flat um, and then stick it onto the vacuum bagging tape. This ended up just being so time consuming and tedious. I had to do the top layer, but also these 3D printed molds are porous, so they can't hold a vacuum. So I had to do another layer of vacuum bagging tape on top of that, and then another layer of vacuum bag on the bottom of the mold. Here I am uh, installing the, the valve. Um, I sucked, once I turned on the vacuum pump, I realized that it just kind of sucked up to the mold and it wasn't really pulling air through. So I had to shove some other stuff in there, just like a toilet paper tube and some fabric to uh, let the air flow down the hose. And then I turned on the pump and eventually got it uh, to the point where I was able to suck all the air out of it. Um, what was I saying before that? Oh yeah, I started at like 8 a.m. And then by the time I had everything finally bagged up and under vacuum, I was like, phew, that was a lot of work. And then I looked at my phone expecting it to be like 1 p.m. or something, and it was like 5 p.m. So the entire day had gone by and I hardly even realized it. It was just so tedious and required so much attention. But anyways, then I was just going around and kind of kneading out all the little air bubbles and flattening out the vacuum bag, trying to get rid of as many bumps as possible. And my little vacuum pump here was smoking a ton, or I think it was actually vaporizing oil, I'm not sure. But anyways, the, the seal wasn't good enough on the vacuum bag, so there was still some airflow going through the pump, and that makes it smoke worse. It does better if there's no airflow. If you have a basement workshop like me, then you probably know how important it is to protect all your valuable tools and equipment. That's why I got Simply Safe. It's a customizable home security system that pairs the latest tech with relationship-focused service team to bring you the best home security experience possible. You can even keep an eye on what's going on around your house with their live HD cameras and video doorbell. Simply Safe systems ship directly to your doorstep and they have tons of sensors to cover every window, room, and door. If anything bad happens, their 24-hour monitoring service will evaluate the situation and alert the authorities if needed. The setup is super easy and they even give you step-by-step -step instructions. Most of the sensors can be installed by just peeling off the adhesive backing and sticking it on your wall. Take 20% off your Simply Safe system and get your first month of monitoring for free. Visit simplysafe.com slash rctestflight to learn more. Now back to the video. So probably two days later, I started cutting away all the vacuum bag and then I ripped out the peel ply and prepared to demold the hull. Had to cut through some of the vacuum bagging tape. It's like thick, gummy, goopy stuff. Then I took out all the bolts that were holding the two halves together and started splitting them apart. This was the moment of truth. Oh, wow, wee. Uh oh, what is that? Uh oh, that's spackle. Oh no, the mold came apart. <laughs> wow, amazing. I just should have put more fiberglass in. It's pretty flimsy. Some parts are strong, like all the sharp places, like down here. It's pretty thick of fiberglass. The trailing edge and the leading edge are pretty strong. Down here is pretty strong, but the walls are pretty flimsy. So I think I'll need some reinforcement in here. I was pretty proud of this because it took a lot of work, let me tell you. So next I mixed up some more epoxy to add more fiberglass to the sides of the hull to fix the fact that it was too flimsy. 
Then I cleaned up the molds to get ready for the next hull. Right here I realized that you cannot spray PVA out of a hand pump spray bottle. So I just ended up painting it on the next layer. And then I started preparing the vacuum bag and preparing more fiberglass for the next hull. So this time around I decided to take a different approach because the first one was so time consuming and tedious. So this time I decided to mold both halves of the hulls separately and then glue them together after they had already been molded. In hindsight, that worked. I mean, it wasn't that much less work. Both methods were fine. I don't know what I would do if I had to do a third hole, but yeah, so here I'm putting on all the epoxy and wetting it in. I was sure to do a little bit more fiberglass this time to make the hole stiffer. Then once that was all wetted down, I put a uh, peel ply on there and then stuck it in the vacuum bag. Put the nozzle on, made a path for the air to flow out with some fabric, sealed the vacuum bag, and then hit the pump. Look at that, look at it shrink, wow, how neat is that? Here I made a dire mistake, which was to put the mold out in the sun to cure faster. This also corresponded to the crazy heat wave that Seattle had. And lo and behold, about 30 minutes later, the PLA started melting. Go figure. This is terrible. Okay, boys, here it comes. Here we go, oh yeah. Baby, baby, this boat is <laughs> look, look, this whole thing melted in the sun today. Uh, why did it melt in the sun? Because I'm a dumbass and I put it in the sun. Next, I removed the peel ply and popped it out of the mold. Sure enough, the hole was pretty textured. You can kind of see the texture of the infill from the 3D printed mold segments here. And here's the mold after I took the hole out of it. Pretty bad. Next, I did the other side, same process as before. Laid in the fiberglass, vacuum bagged it, let it cure, and then popped it out of the mold. That one I did not leave in the sun and it turned out pretty good. It was kind of flimsy though when there's not another side to it. It's not very stiff, but I don't think the epoxy is fully cured either. Then I trimmed off the excess fiberglass with a Dremel tool. Did that to the top and bottom, but I was sure to leave a lip on the top because that's what I would use to attach the top deck. And then I ground down the edges of the hull halves with another Dremel tool. Then I put the mold back together and stuck the two hull halves back in there and laid thinner pieces of fiberglass down the seam. And then I wetted those down with epoxy to glue the two hull halves together. This was pretty straightforward and I didn't need to vacuum bag it or anything like that. After popping the molds open, it was clear that it worked pretty well. There's definitely a bit of a seam along the two halves, but that could be fixed with some epoxy filler. I cleaned up the seam a little bit and then kept on going with the Dremel to clean up more of the excess. To remove any lingering edges, I sanded the seam, made it nice and flat, nice and smooth. Then to remove any PVA that was on there from the molding process, I stuck them in the shower and washed them off. Next I had to try and fix the melted mold section, so I put a bunch of more fiberglass on the affected area to thicken up the wall of the hull a little bit and then took some really coarse sandpaper and sanded down the outside as much as I could. It was definitely an improvement, but it still wasn't completely flat, so I ended up needing to add some filler to smooth out all the holes. This is where I decided to do some experimenting. So I took some of that elasto polymer flexible spackle stuff that I used earlier and mixed it with epoxy. I'd never seen this done before, but I thought I'd try it out just to see what happened. So I spread that all over the melted area and then let it cure. After a day or so, I took some super coarse sandpaper to it and tried to sand it flat, and it didn't sand that well. Um, I probably needed to wait a little bit longer for it to cure, but I was able to eventually get it down pretty flat. When you would try and sand it, it would just kind of roll up, like you'd see these little ball like rolls of stuff. That's kind of what happened. It took a while, but I eventually got it fairly flat, but it was still not super smooth, so I used some proper filler epoxy that I probably should have just used in the first place. Ended up putting that on there to smooth out any remaining ridges and gaps. And then I sanded that down nice and flat and smooth. Boy, oh boy, that was a lot of work. Probably enough for one video. This seems like a good stopping place because now we have two nice fiberglass molded holes. In the next video, we'll install the propulsion system and finish up the holes and then connect them together to form a proper catamaran. Hope you enjoyed this build montage. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.
It could be a spaceship or a jet ski. Mm -hmm.